Last night, we told you that more than 300 children that we know of have been spirited away from their fathers by Japanese mothers growing up in another country, some as many as for 15 years. Tonight, Abby Boudreau travels to Japan for part two of this World News investigation. Last night, we showed you anguished fathers. The only time I ever get to see my kids is when I dream about them. Their children in Japan just out of reach. We traveled to Japan looking, first, for a mother on the FBI's most wanted list for parental kidnapping. We approach a woman we believe is her sister. Did you know she's on the FBI's most wanted list? I'm sorry, no comment. You she quickly rushed inside. Next, a Navy commander's daughter. Taken at nine months old, she's now nearly nine. Her mother is no longer alive, but we found her with her Japanese grandmother, who's raising her. Would you allow him to see her? No. No. All the fathers we talk to say they feel the American government has failed them. I get emails from my daughter saying that she's hungry, she needs money, and I get no help from the State Department. Scott Sawyer hasn't seen his son Wayne in two years. He got an email from his ex-wife one day after his son's kidnapping. It said in part, now it's time to start this game in Japanese rules. If you report me to the police, you can't see Wayne. Within moments of showing up at her parents' house, we see her leave the driveway with Wayne on the back of her bike. She tells us she's happy to talk, but asks we not show her face or use her name. Do you consider yourself a kidnapper? Um, that was, um, at the time, my choices was just a two. Kidnapper or die. Die? Right. I can't live in Los Angeles. She says she felt isolated and abandoned after the divorce. The judge asked you to turn over your passport. Uh -huh. How did you do it? That was very easy to me. It was easy? Yeah. I explained the, uh, the Jap Japanese embassy. I lost it. And then she tells us something startling. The Japanese consulate told us they only issue passports for minors with the consent of both parents. But she says she got one simply by giving a fake name for her son. We show the State Department portions of this interview. It's disappointing when she talks about how easy it is. Some might consider this a national security threat. If it's that easy to get a passport and leave the country when you're not supposed to. That could be. As for pushing the Japanese government to change its policy? It's not a question of power. It's a question of persuasion. Japan has to do the right thing. I think you know, I use my head. Uh, how do you say? Intelli in Intelligence. Intelligence. Yes, you outsmarted the system. Mm, I think that. <laughs> I think that. So, Abby, what is going to get the Japanese government to change this? Well, that's a really tough question. I mean, all the U.S. can do is plead with the Japanese government to try to get them to return these children, but it can't force it to return the, all these kids. And the sad part is, is that the, you, you met all these, these fathers. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be helped if Japan signs this international treaty that helps protect these children. It's only the future parents that this might happen to who would be helped by that treaty. All right. Well, thank you. Two-part investigation, and we appreciate it.